I did want to say that there was a guy that I was hopeful would maybe emerge as a camp darling. Uh, the fact that he hasn't isn't indicative of anything. But you wrote about him this week, actually, Cody, uh, and a guy that I'm hella interested in, Ryan uh, Belade. So I'm in North Texas. He grew up grapevine, Frisco, all these suburbs of, of, of Dallas, Fort Worth. And he ends up in Stillwater because his dad is a baseball coach. Uh, his dad was a coach at Oklahoma State at one time. So I watched this kid play in high school. He was a third base at the time. He played, uh, or he was drafted in the second round by the Rockies. I don't know, what we, um, years are running together. Was it 2017, 18? 17, 17. 17, 17. And, uh, and I remember thinking at a time, people were going to think online. I remember thinking at a time, I was like, all right, so he's a draft prospect. He's obviously, you know, he's not going to go play at Oklahoma State like he was committed to. Uh this guy could get on a Nick Castellanos uh, trajectory, and I think it would make a lot of sense. He's a bigger guy, you know what I mean? Now, obviously, that hasn't happened. So he's not the prospect that Nick was or, you know, the pro- player profile Nick was. But it, in terms of not gonna not an infielder, eventually, for whatever reason, goes into the outfield. Now he might go back into the infield. Uh, he's a guy that is also, like I was explaining to some of our friends, uh, college friends, Cody, I was like, he's a guy that is like a classic dude to bring into this organization at this point where he's got some tools. He's got some things that you like. He's going to provide some organizational depth. And, you know, who knows if he gets in your system, your infrastructure, maybe maybe something's there that hasn't facilitated at this point. He has made his major league debut, but he's hit list in what, seven plate appearances. So uh, that's him, the player. But you wrote about him the family man, the person this week, and uh, hard to hard to find some uh, a good a better guy to root for. Yeah, look, the reality is Ryan Blade probably not going to make this roster. You know, he'll, he'll be a nice option to have in Toledo. Maybe we'll see him. Maybe we won't. He's he's lower on the pecking order, no doubt. But uh, one of the cool things about spring training, it's the best time of year to just talk to guys at their lockers, learn about them, whatever it may be. You said, you know, we had the the Stillwater connection. So I was interested to get to know Ryan a little bit. And then one of those people, you talk to him and, and then I talked to his dad, James. And it's like, wow, sometimes you can just you talk to people who make you feel bad about yourself as a person. It's like these are just some great human beings. Um, James Valade has a foundation called Keeper of the Game. And he's had it for 10 years. It's geared toward helping those with um, you know Down syndrome and autism and physical disabilities and a wide range of other situations. Um, it helps that community and it helps spread the game of baseball. You know, it uses b- baseball as an avenue to get these kids some opportunities, uh, get them some cool experiences, also raises funds and awareness and has scholarships. Uh, they put a ton of work into it. And Ryan, the son, has taken to it pretty naturally. Uh, seems to be something he's genuinely passionate about. There's a link to uh, the website and his Instagram bio says every now and then he'll have a random fan he's never even met. Just drop him five or ten dollars to donate to the foundation, which is cool. So one of those things just to learn more about that family, why it's passionate to him. You can read that story on The Athletic. Uh, as far as Ryan as a player, you know, I think he's interesting. Like I said, you know, I don't know if he has any future in this organization, but I see where the Tigers brought him in. He's a 279 career hitter in the minor leagues, 360 OBP. He has a really good hit tool. You know, talking to AJ Hinch, the Tigers are, are trying to help him get some more balls on the end or third of the plate and get him, you know, put it in the air a little bit. He doesn't have a lot of power, but he's had a re- really natural hit tool. Probably not a great defender, but he can move a little bit, can play several different positions. Honestly, he seems like a guy who, like, in the 2019, you know, like 2021 Tigers, Maybe he could have got a lot of playing time and he would hit like 260 and, you know, like, I don't know if there's really a spot for him now, but uh, he has some things to offer an organization. And if he can unlock the hit tool a little bit, I think he could still float around the big leagues for a few years. So one of those guys that, you know, I don't know if we'll hear his name much ever again in Detroit, but certainly, I'm you know, I got to admit, I'm going to be rooting for the kid.